സ്വാഗതം You'll be happy and healthy and free of worry. Good to see y'all. Welcome. A uh, quick announcement for anyone in real time that is not watching us in the future. Uh, next weekend is Easter. And so uh, there are no classes Friday, Saturday or Sunday or Monday. So that little, that little bunch, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, there'll be no classes. Otherwise, all classes run as normal. Okay, that's the announcement. We're going to sit in Sukhasana. That's cross legs position. Um, breathing through the nose, a gap between the legs and pelvis, butter flesh drawn out and back. Palms facing up. Uh, attention drawn in. Shoulders dropped down. So natural. Ordinary breathing. Now we might find ourselves circling or half circling the pelvis. So I say the pelvis, you know, it's the torso, the pelvis. You know, we might <laughs> find ourselves uh, doing those things. Not that we're, um, you know, deciding. Because we could also find, might find ourselves not doing those things and find ourselves doing something else. But whatever it is that the body's doing, it should be tuning us out of our ideas about the future, concepts about the past. So this is Sukhasana, on a block or straight on the floor tuning out of ideas about the future, expectations, that we, things we imagine are going to happen, and tuning out as well of what we believe has happened recently. And, and, and I know that sounds um, quite an unusual sentence in a way, what we believe has happened. Because whatever we perceived, we colored that, the, the Sanskrit word leisha, colored, added some filter onto it. And then that's what we experienced. Huh? So to strip back to the bare experience uh, in a way is impossible about the past or the future, but possible in the present. And the way it's possible in the present is to move in ways that are, uh, well, they follow the Lila Atta Lakshana, uh, little threefold teaching, Lila, investigative play, Arta, the reason for the play, which is absorption, specifically absorption in the interdependent experience that everything's part of. And then Lakshana, a sign that, absorb, that, a, that absorption has taken place. Signs include the breath opening up because we feel relieved. So the breath responds in a way that somebody who is relieved So, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, uh, traditional yoga, we can say, or, or uh, all the forms of yoga could well be orbiting around just one or two postures. And I certainly feel I could use this posture to tune out of the future, out of the past, and into uh, the richness of the field that's non-conceptual, that you know, uh, you can only throw your cup into the ocean, you can't put the ocean in your cup, sort of vibe. Inhaling, lifting from the groins, exhaling, right hand on the floor behind you, left hand crosses over both legs. <laughs> so, this is paravrita. And there's several ways in which we could overturn, uh, and, and those include um, not feeling aligned between the sitting bones. So, that's a something we want to tune in on and being aligned between the sitting bones. Feeling the spine is eventually, not so we don't rigidly demand these things, we investigate the spine is eventually between the uh, sitting bones. We're not distorting the spine. So there could be swaying, there could be movement of any kind that conduces to you feeling uh, relaxed. <laughs> 
I saw a post today at our fr- uh, from our friends at Fison Fitness in Herne Hill. That was a sort of advert, I suppose. And uh, he was emphasizing, Joe, that is, was emphasizing uh, the importance of enjoying whatever exercise you do. It's like, you gotta just enjoy it. And don't, if you're not enjoying it, do it differently, you know, or don't do, or don't do it, you know, or do, do what you enjoy. I thought it was a very simple, really, really useful message. So enjoyment, bhoga. We're told bhoga and voksha are the reasons why the interdependent field is there. And in a sense, uh, the bhoga, our enjoyment, our experience is how we get through it, as it were. Lift and turn and lift and turn and lift and turn and lift and turn, <laughs> going the other way. So again, we're, what we're avoiding is any modalities that express themselves as gripping, grasping, grabbing. Tensions, tightness, limitations of the mind, fixations of the mind. And so physical movement can, can help. But uh, arbitrary physical movement doesn't help. It has to be the physical movement that does help. <laughs> so it should feel, you know, should be enjoyable on some level. And the enjoyment here, it doesn't have to mean, you know, straightforward, sort of happy or pleasant, but, but absorbing. The things we... We, we enjoy, I think, uh, we enjoy because they absorb us ultimately in the field through the portal that is playing guitar, eating a meal, cuddling a friend, walking in the forest, you know, feeling the ground beneath your feet, feeling the sun on your face, feeling the movements of the spine in Sukhasana, Paravrita Sukhasana. Good job. Return to center, palms up. Take deep breaths, plural. Drop the shoulders. Deep, natural, honest breath. Deep, natural, honest breath. Okay, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle the fingers. It really helps with the meningeal fascia. And then we're going to change the cross of the legs, which is why I did that with my hands. So <laughs> the other leg goes in front. Nicely done. Very good. <clears throat> Listen and respond. Uh, you know, so we, we need always to be open. Uh, and it's very easy to get fixed in life and including in your yoga practice. We want to avoid getting fixed in life or our yoga practice, fixed on an idea of what we think we are or fixed on an idea about what we think the future will be like. We don't know. No one can predict the future. <laughs> All right, and whatever you think it's going to be, It's going to be something a little different to that. So just let your mind be open instead of anticipating the future on the basis of what's happened in the past. So again, we can move around, left, right, forwards, backwards. The arta, the purpose, is absorption. So that should condition the way we move. If the purpose is absorption, the way we move should be absorbing. Jaw soft, eyes soft, throat soft, brain soft. So this softening is something that happens physically, but it's not happening physically if it's not happening respiratorily with the breath. And it's not happening respiratorily, uh, respiratorily, I can't say that word now, with the breath. If it's not happening with with the mind, it's clearly my mind's gone quite flowy. It may be because I made up a new word. Anyway, body, brain, breath. And then inhale from the inner groins, keep soft, meditative, and turn. Doesn't matter which way you turn, we're going to turn both ways. Tune out to tune in. I was talking to uh, Ollie Smythe today, marvelous, handsome, kind compassionate, uh, spiritual, uh, Ollie Smythe, who lives three minutes away from here, by foot, <laughs> about the, the new, uh, the second book. He's doing illustrations and formatting for that. So that's very exciting. 
because he's very skillful. But it, we were talking about, you know, the, the second book is just uh, paragraphs, metaphor, the metaphors we know to remind us of them. But one of them is the tuning in, tuning out metaphor. And he was talking about drawing, you know, doing some lovely line drawings of an old fashioned radio, which I'm super excited to see. But, the, you know, the, the, the metaphor is tuning out, tuning in, or tuning in, tuning out. You know, tuning into this requires tuning out of that. Tuning out of that requires tuning into this. And what is that? Ideas, opinions, reactions, expectations. Inhale, <laughs> lift, turn. Keep lifting, turning. And turn all the way around the other way. We call it the second side. Breathe through your nose, eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft, tongue soft, jaw soft. Dun, 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 dun. Tuning out, tuning in. So tuning into love could sound contrived. And some of you would have got it that straight away, though. Tuning into love. Tuning into love means tuning into giving. <laughs> giving and love always go together. If you love anything, you'll want to give to it. Perhaps most fundamentally, attention. If we give attention to something, it's because there's love there. <laughs> if I give attention to you, you give attention to me, it's because there's love there. <laughs> because the most important thing we have is our attention. The biggest thing we can give is our attention. That's a pretty deep reflection. Uh, there's lots of connotations, but the, the reflection remains solid throughout all those connotations. Anything you give attention to, in a sense, there's love there. Okay, return to center. Good job, everyone. Release slow and easy. And with good luck on your side, you'll be able to lay on your side without too much trubs. That's the word that's short for trouble, trubs. So support your head with your hand. I'm just gonna, sorry if this makes a noise, I'm just reattaching this. Microphone and then extend your bottom ribs a few times. Right? Extend your bottom ribs a few times. So you get this touch. If you're uh, tight around the SI joint, uh, put something between the legs, like a blanket or a little bolster. We've got some really super little bolsters here, actually. I wish, uh, wish everyone had them. They're tiny little bolsters. We've got about six of them. We were gifted them. There's something that goes between the legs or even between the feet, like a block. That can make a bit of space for the um, for the SI joint if it's tight, and, and then you know rolling forwards and backwards. The SI joint loves space, <laughs> and that doesn't you know whether it's inflamed, whether it's not inflamed. It loves space. So there's this area of nerves, the sacral plexus. They're nerves that largely run down uh, through the sacral plexus, through the sacral forum, and holes in the sacrum. <laughs> down through into the legs, uh, nerves such as the sciatic nerve runs down through to the legs. Then the, the sacral forum and the, the nerves pass through those little holes. <laughs> so we want the nerves to be calm and spacious and relaxed. And because what happens to the nerves happens to the muscles, what happens to the muscles happens to the, to the mind, what happens to the mind happens to the breath, what happens to the breath happens to our universe. We, you know, we have options about how to be open or closed at any at every moment. So we're just rolling, rolling, rolling. That's simple, isn't it? Very simple. Now I could roll a lot longer, but we're going to drop our heads. We're going to have a moment, which means draw the knees up, curled up a little bit. And take a few deep breaths, a few deep breaths, and just observe any tensions that are in the body or in the breath. 
and letting go. Coming up from the side, cool, calm, collective. And we're going to go do exactly the same thing, although it won't be the same because you never step in the same river twice, <coughs> on the other side. Extend the bottom ribs, extend the armpit. Again, a block between the legs, if, you, if it feels more comfortable or a bolster can help. Uh, uh, you know, and it's just you could just see, does that help? Does it go better? And better here means spacious, spaciousness is mirrored in the breath. And then rolling, just rolling. <laughs> rolling forwards, finding moments. Uh, so, so what do we mean by finding moments? So you find a moment where what the body was holding in the form of a pattern in the nerves that then is expressed in the muscles is challenged by imprinting something other than that into the muscles. So you have the drive coming from the nerves to the muscles and then you have <coughs> the, the physical movement of the pressure or whatever, or the stretch, or whatever we're doing in yoga at any time. And then th those two imprints, imprinting into the muscular system, you know, the body can't be controlled by two masters at the same time. One or the other has to go. Right? So one of the reasons it's helpful, I think, sometimes to come to classes is because, you know, we are held in poses uh, in a way that goes beyond our own uh, conditioning. And that helps to purify the nerves for what the body was holding. Because what normally happens in day-to-day -day life is our, the habits in the nerves push everything else aside. But when we are insistent, pushing something into the body, what's in the nerves might release instead. And that's how you purify the nerves. That's how you become open. That's how you become available. Okay, knees up, breathe easy through the nose, ideally. Jaw soft, eyes soft, throat soft, brain soft, tongue soft, everything soft that can be soft. Natural, easy, honest breath. Natural, easy, honest breath. This is expressive, natural, easy, honest. Okay, it's nice, isn't it? Let's come up from the side. And when you're ready, onto hands and knees. And just check that your hands are ready for Adomo Kushwanasana. That is down face dog by making sure the hands are equidistant from the sides and the front of the mat, and that the middle fingers face forwards, sorry, forwards. And then we're just gonna play with the cat-cat uh, pose. Some people call it cat-cow, but in both the names that are used, uh, um, both mean cat in Sanskrit. Abhitala and uh, Marija. So here we're going to play with it by firstly pressing the hands down, shoulder blades into the back body and calmly opening the chest so the back has a little dip and then we want to soften within the dip. So another metaphor I use quite a lot is that of the two stepping stones, isn't it? First stepping stone is a rich sensation, like a dip in the back. But that's not it. It doesn't get you across the river. You've got to take the second one too. And that's breathing into that sensation. Now, ordinary one, we find ourselves in classes just pushing the back up and down. But here we're going to control the reverse movement by imagining that the abdominals are pulling the pubis and the breastbone towards each other. Right? So you actually feel this abdominally, like a muscular contraction. And that begins to round the back. It's powerful. I enjoy it because it's a strong <coughs> imprint. One needs to use an imprint to remove an imprint. And then we're going to keep that tone in the belly. So it's just e we're going to eccentrically contract the belly, which means keep the tone as you draw back to the con 
concave back position, but the belly should feel taut like a drum skin. And then reversing again, using only if you can, or predominantly if you can, the belly muscles, right? So you have to visualize them coming into a deeper weave from top to bottom, top meaning uh, the lower part of the ribs, the lower part of the breastbone, and the bottom meaning the pubic bone and the inguinal ligament run, that runs between the hips. It should be sort of strong. Okay, and repeat, keep the eccentric contraction. So that means as you stretch, you tone or you keep the tone. One way to visualize that is that the fibers are moving into a sort of wider stretched out weave, but the individual cells that make up the fibers, rows of the cells make up a fiber, those keep their tone. Okay, last time of the concentrated contraction of the abdominals. Breathing through the nose and then lift up the bum and push all the way up through the armpits to the groins, inner armpit, inner groin, outer armpit, outer groin, under armpit, front groin in waves, so I think anyway, it's nice. To, so the waves can take a couple of different forms or perhaps more, but a couple that I can mention. That is like the waves that you could flick through a skipping rope or other rope, any rope. So you could you know, flick a wave through a rope. So we want to flick waves through our back, like you're flicking waves through a rope again and again and again. Again and again and again. And breathing, of course, free and natural, all pits open, inner and outer. Another way we can send is up the front of the body, through the armpits, through the chest, to the groins. And again, that's a wave that then is followed by an immediate second wave, third wave, fourth wave. These waves just keep going up to the groins. And then it feels as if you're being hung from the groins, like by a, by a, a coat hanger. And that enables us to hang from that reiterated point, that reiterated lifted point, the, the bit of the coat hanger that you're hung over, you know, like you hang a pair of trousers over a coat. Like that. Okay, well done. Come down slow and easy to Vajrasana. So that's kneeling. And, and many of us find it useful to put a, a block between the heels and buttocks, so feel free uh, to do just that. Breathe through the nose with soft eyes, soft brain, shoulders down, head up. Expressive, natural, honest breathing. Expressive, natural. Honest breathing and, and movement might come. We know movement's honest when it's uh, an expression. <sighs> so jaw, soft eyes, soft throat, soft brain, soft tongue, soft. Everything soft that can be soft. Come to your forearms in a fairly generous shoulder width and take your legs back in a fairly generous hip width. And then feel free to play. For example, you could turn your palms in so they face each other or out so they face the ceiling. And you can move between those. You could also bounce the pelvis, moving it forwards, backwards, left or right, toning the tummy thereby. Breath is everything. It's a bit of a thing we say, isn't it? Breath is everything. Jaw is soft, brain is soft, tongue is soft. Good job. Okay, knees forwards and sitting up, breathing through the nose if you can. Take a few deep breaths in your own time. Jaw, soft throat, soft brain, soft. Now I'm going to presume, because you're in a building, that you've got a wall, um, because ceilings don't just float. So... <laughs> 
now this isn't a wall, but I'm going to pretend it is. This is a curtain behind which are my clothes. But anyway, you walk up to your wall, fingers a little lower than shoulders. So if I, if I were to use this at the back, fingers a little lower than shoulders. Or if I were to use this, which is an actual wall, <laughs> but it's a bit too long, but that's fine. We then walk back and push back and breathe through the nose. Now, if it's difficult to stand up, you can do this kneeling with your elbows on a chair and just walk your knees back. That works really well. Sometimes it's useful to do things like lifting the heels and sending waves back through the body. Your hands could be on blocks that are on a chair. They could be on a chair back. So if you haven't got a wall or a stable wall, and you know, I presumed everyone has got a wall, but then I thought, well, no, they don't actually. You know, some of you in yurts, some of you may be outside in the garden. Okay, walk forwards towards the back of the chair or the wall, whatever you're using, and bring yourself up to standing. And then, if you don't mind returning <coughs> to your mat, that will be awesome. The feet are hip width apart. And you're breathing easy. And you can even do this kneeling if you had difficulty standing because it's Kayot Saga. Beautiful, I said. Jaw soft. So, first thing is toes. Spread out your toes. And you can even do that if you're kneeling. As I say, you can even have your toes, which will be behind you, sort of soft. Shoulders down. Notice if you're when you're kneeling or standing, whether your body wants to go this way or that way and let it. If it wants to collapse or if it wants to twist, you know, let it go to its the full extent of any directions that it sort of drifts in. And it can just drift around looking for the full uh, end of those sort of organic uh, directions, those, those directions that are being driven by the nerves. And just let it play itself out and it will find itself back to center without you. And it will do so better than if you or I did it because it will do so holistically by, by sort of going to each point that it got tied up on, fully going there, untying, drifting to another point, untying and so on. So really let it drift around, even if it drifts in all sorts of directions. So sort of exploring the full extent of uh, these uh, karmas helps us to undo these karmas, the, the, or these karma vipaka. Uh, karma means action, uh, vipaka means fruit. Hmm. Hmm. Breathing through the nose. Then we're going to raise the arms up, keeping the roots of the neck soft. My hands now have disappeared uh, into the ether <laughs> out of the screen. But I can reassure you that they're still there. And I know yours are still there too, if you're not, yours aren't in the screen. So move left, move right, play, breathe, relax and enjoy. Organic natural breaths, plural. Finding the pelvic floor. Eyes soft, brain soft. Press the feet, raise the fingers, inhale. Exhale, bend ankles, knees and hips and hinge forwards from the hip joints. And you can play. Now, even if you're kneeling, you can play, you know, with, with movements that are organic for you. Or if it's more comfortable, if you're someone who's finding standing difficult, you can um, come back into a down face dog. So lots of different ways in which you can do this. And we, the pose is called Utkatasana, which means Utkata is Sanskrit for squat. And there's lots of ways in which you can bring yourself uh, holistically into whatever squat's comfortable for you. Now, it might not be down on the floor, but uh, you can even uh, have the heels up is okay. But we're coming as, you know, to whatever uh, squat we're comfortable to come to. And then movement left, movement right, breath, brain, body, all together. 
breath, brain, body, all together. Okay, and then we're going to come from our squat to what I call laying down. Now, we're going to use a couple of blocks. If you've got them, I hope you have, but you can use books. This kind of block, right? A regular, well, there used to be the regular chip foam was the, was the normal, but <coughs> many other blocks exist now, but I still think the chip foam ones are the better ones, uh, simply because they don't slip around as much. Uh, they're just not as easy to transport. Uh, but they're soft enough to rest on too. You can get sort of um, cork versions of these, but which work quite well for some poses, but they are quite hard. The tailbone should come off the end, just off the end of the uh, lift. <coughs> and you take a breath or two and allow a bit of movement. The knees might move left or right. Just allow a bit of movement. Breath comes and goes. Brain stays soft. So movement is massaging. Uh, obviously, let it be organic. Let it be the right movement for you. And that might not, that might be no movement, you know. I find, uh, I'm finding today that the, the knees moving left and right is beneficial. But this thing responding is, is what we do. The second block will come in when we're ready. So we'll walk the feet in, lift the heels up. Take the second block, be very calm underneath the pelvis, <laughs> the tailbone just off the end, reiterated. I find it quite useful. You could try it if you want by take, taking your thumbs. I'm showing you thumbs in case you don't know what thumbs are. These are thumbs. And, and then just using your th thumb to scoot under as you lift up, to scoot the buttock flesh under towards the heels. Hands will rest on the ribs, breathing through the nose. Neck soft, eyes soft, brain soft. Jaw soft. Expressive, investigative breath, investigative movement. So again, there might be movement side to side with the knees. That's kind of up to us, whether or not there's utility in that. And then we're going to lift up our feet when we're ready and extend the knees in our own time. And breathing easy. So this is a version of uh, Viparita Karani. Now, obviously, there are many versions of Viparita Karani. <laughs> you know, the reversed or the inverted practice. You can make it more comfortable for yourself. However, you know, I don't know how, but for me, uh, the legs come over, the bum, you know, wags the tail. Maybe you need to bend the knees, whatever. Maybe you need to bring the feet down and adjust the lift. When your legs are up and comfortable, you can move the feet backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. Breathing easy, eyes soft, brain soft. So this is a really super uh, practice, very traditional in terms of Hatha Yoga. Viparita Karani. And there are many uh, variations on the theme of Viparita Karani. Okay, bring your feet back down. Use your abdominals if you can. Don't hold your breath, let it go. Walk your feet in towards your bum. Lift your heels up and take the blocks out. <laughs> one at a time to either side before walking your feet away from your bum again, pop your hands underneath your head. Take five or six really deep breaths once your hands are there. Really let them draw, the breath kind of draws in. And then it's really, really powerfully released and naturally released. So it's, it's drawn like a fire draws air. If you open up the bottom of a wood burner or something, you know. Lift up your feet. The lower back is close to the floor. Let your feet hang from your ankles. Let your knee, your shins hang from your knees. Lift up your head and breathe through your nose. Lift up the head and breathe through the nose. Eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft. 
Touch the ground with your toes only and then lift up again and repeat. So there's three in total, probably by now on our third. Then flexing up again, head down again, legs extended. <coughs> you might find it useful to wag the tail or swing the legs or move the feet or any of those. Just bringing everything together. Deep, natural, honest breathing. We're going to lift our heads and look towards the Narbha Chakra, navel center. Remember what we're doing is making an impression. It's about making an impression, a samskara. Samskara is impression. Sanghara is the Pali. Same thing in the Pali language. An impression, an impression to release impressions. Imagine from two sides, the muscles are being instructed from the nervous systems, habits, memories, assumptions. And then from the way things are now, the legs in the air, the tone in the belly, the head off the floor. One, one has to pack down, one has to leave. And the drives, the habits, the anxieties in the nerves, if we stay longer and if we breathe into it, those will release. Okay, head down, bend your knees, place your feet on the floor. Let me hear you take a deep breath in and deep breath out like a sigh. Let go, 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 let go. Let go. And that's just, you know, ad infinitum. Okay, release your hands from behind your head. <coughs> Roll over when you're ready and come up from the side. Now it's time for a treat. What do you think I mean? Well, you're probably thinking, well, that'd be lovely, but I like a cup of tea and a cake. But actually, I mean a blanket. So you're going to bring a blanket onto your mat. Uh, if you haven't got a blanket, towels work really well. Uh, it's very simple. The pose is going to be uh, virasana, but it's not to be underestimated. Now, I'll show you the pose facing away from you, which you might think is very antisocial and a bit sort of mighty bush when... Uh, what was uh, Vince's cousin's name? I should remember. You're probably all shouting it out. Anyway, he's turn his back. Naboo. There you go. Anyway, I'm going to turn my back on you, but not in that way. The inner ankles a little bit wider than the outer hips. And I placed two blocks there. You could have three or you could have one or you could have four. But blocks there between the inner ankles and the legs themselves are together. So that's, that's the position. And I'm just going to, I'm going to have one block myself, but I, you, a minimum of one. Now, once you've got the block there, you might have three blocks or whatever, three fingers. And the fingers go into the calves, the middle finger in the middle of the two heads of the calf muscle, and then drawing your fingers back as you sit down onto your block. And then the buttock flesh is drawn out and back. That block, by the way, is under the buttocks, not the thighs. Under the buttocks, not the thighs. Good job. Interlace your fingers and stretch your arms down while resting your thumbs on your legs. Breathing through your nose with soft eyes. Soft jaw as well. Maybe there's a little movement, a little wiggling side to side or swaying. The movement is there to promote integration into the moment. Movement promoting integration into the moment. And integration, you could say, another synonym is absorption. Good. And then raising your arms up when you're ready. And as the arms go up, 
Feel the legs relaxing, the buttocks relaxing, and the tummy drawing in. When you get about three quarters of the way, make sure not to impinge <coughs> on the neck. Make sure you're not making the head thrust forward. Head up. I'm <coughs> breathing through the nose. Jaw soft, eyes soft, brain soft, tongue soft. <laughs> So lots of play, moving this way, moving that way. Eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft, tongue soft. The expressive breath. Take a big wide circle to release. We're going to bring our hands onto our feet. So depending on how many blocks you've got, the hands might be flat or maybe not. If you can, depending on the length of your arms and how many blocks you've got, the, the heel of the hand goes on the heel of the foot. The shoulders roll back and down and the chest is lifted up. Breathing is through the nose and the head is kept in line with the spine. Crown of the head lifted, the inside of the knees are soft. And the breath is expressive. There may still be movement as part of tuning out, tuning in. Calmness, conditions, connection. So we're looking for that the place that we sit that is stable and integrated. So your seat becomes integrated through movement. We have this stira uh, sukhamasanam, the seat becoming integrated through movement. Breath is everything. So study the body. Study tensions, don't move away from them, study them. How are they connected uh, to the breath? Are they connected to the breath? So I suppose I think you can just keep refining and I suppose that um, it's easy to underestimate. It's not, it doesn't look super exciting. <laughs> okay, release your hands, let your seat settle. You'll feel your seat settles more when your hands are released. We're going to come out now. The resting pose after uh, Virasana is Vajrasana, which you can put a block between the heels and buttocks, you can put a, a rolled up blanket underneath the front shins, but we just sit in regular uh, Vajrasana after that. Such a good pose, really easy to underestimate, uh, and a good opportunity for cleansing the nerves. Remember, that's, what we're, that's why we're doing these practices, to cleanse the nerves. That's why I like that uh, post this morning from uh, our friends at Bison uh, Fitness, Herne Hill. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, they uh, have just a lot of emphasis on happiness and enjoyment. And they're, you know, they, they run a fitness studio, but they're, they're about holism, community, friendliness. And, I th and, and that's true health, right? That's true health. So just breathing into what you feel, eyes soft, throat soft, brain soft. Okay, we're going to uh, tidy up a little bit and then we're going to roll up our blanket to a neat saucisson, which is French for sausage. I don't know what French is for blanket, but some of you do, I think. Sausage blanket. <laughs> and so you're going to make a sausage blanket. I think I know the Spanish for blanket, it might be manta, but 
I don't know the French. Maybe I do, but I've forgotten. You, you may anyway love this French prattling or non-French prattling. We're going to lay down on that uh, support. It goes underneath the bottom of the scapula, <laughs> aka shoulder blades. And support yourself as well as you can as you come down. So underneath the bottom edge or on the bottom edge or just below the bottom edge of the scapula, shoulder blades is where we want to place it. And then we're going to start with our arms up once we're in the right position and legs together. Like that, it is, so, I don't know why, it reminds me this position of the um, the diver from, from the mousetrap game. <clears throat> the the, the mousetrap game brings very happy um, memories. My sister, Sarah, uh, she owned the mousetrap game. I think it was Sarah's, right? I think so. <laughs> but the main thing, we didn't really play the game so much, just set it up and then watch it go. And there was a little diver who did something sort of diving into a bucket or something. Anyway, arms are up. <laughs> That's a short version of that. Then the arms are stretching over the head. Now you can do it with the hands apart or together. No, you I'm not having I haven't got a landing point here, but it's not a bad thing to have something to land on. You know, you could grab some books or you could put blocks there if you wanted. But actually, also, it's worth saying that the more you move sort of side to side, the more movement you'll get because we're gradually moving the shoulder blades out and up, out and up. And then breathing through the nose, legs are together, jaw is soft. Neck is relaxed. Breathing is honest. Natural breathing. So this is a simple stretch, but pretty effective. There's, we draw everything in that we can, the tummy, the sides of the tummy, the back of the body from the sides of the legs, from the front of the legs, everything draws in and contributes to this lengthening process. Contributes to this lengthening process. And the breath, of course, is an expressive element here. Keep breathing. Make sure the legs stay together. Don't let them drift apart. But, but let's not be tense around the tail. There can be tone without tension, right? There can be tone without tension. Tension's like an attitude. So real strength has tone, but it doesn't have tension. Okay, I like this one. I hope you do too. Bend the legs very calmly. Roll over. You might, you know, might be a bit tricky actually, but you do what you can <laughs> and roll over and come up from the side. Now, of course, it's Thursday. Uh, well, unless you're watching this in the future sometime, which is whatever day of the week it is, but on a Thursday, it used to be an evening I used to look forward to on the television in the 70s and 80s because it was Top of the Pops night, uh, also Tomorrow's World, which I used to like very much. So in, in other words, it's a treaty evening. So we're going to make ourselves a treaty um, uh, blanket fold, uh, and that's going to go on books or blocks. So I'll just do that again. So treaty, pleaty, and until it's completey. And it's got to be neaty as well. So, you know, just do it again and again until it's the pleats are neat. And at that point, it's complete. It's going to be for your back in Supta Bhada Konasana. So, as I say, um, blocks are pretty good. If you're tall, you can make a little space betwixt, mm -hmm, I did say that, betwixt the blocks. 
like this. So I've got a little space here. It's large enough, you probably can't see these, it's large enough to put my glasses in exactly like that. Uh, anyway, <coughs> the, that gives you a bit more length if you need it. The blanket or towel goes on top of your blocks or books like that with the end here, clean, flush. The blanket doesn't overlap. If you've got uh, any tightness in the SI joint, make sure you've got some supports ready for your legs as well for this pose uh, that should be of equal height. So they can be cushions, you know, um, that's really whatever you got. Could be something else. <laughs> and as I say, support for the head as well. Uh, you use a belt. So I'm usually I actually have a real belt in here today. Uh, and that belt can either be pre-tied in a loop or you can tie it as you go. So you can either tie it in a loop and then that loop goes over the top of you, or you can uh, apply it uh, as you take the pose. So uh, you would place the belt underneath the little toe side of the feet. The thing people, when people do get something wrong, it's always that they put it around the outer leg instead of the inner. And the other thing that could be uh, gotten wrong is that it, it could be that you take it too high up your back. It shouldn't really be on your back at all. Uh, it should be on the, well, it is part of the back, I suppose, the sacrum, the bony plate that constitutes the back of the pelvis, but it is actually a widening of the uh, vertebral column, flattening and widening. And that's the area just above the tailbone, just below the waist. So that's where it wants to attach on the back of the body. The feet shouldn't be too close to you. Um, a little distance is useful. Otherwise, you can't turn the pelvis. Remember that the belts are around the inner thighs, around the sacrum, and we're gonna scoot the buttocks under two or three times, that is towards the heels. We're gonna suck the tummy in, <laughs> and we're gonna stretch down. We're not gonna lay down, we're gonna stretch down. So this is of course, Supta Baddha Konasana, you've got to get all your lower back on there and none of the back of the pelvis. Occasionally, um, somebody might not have much lumbar arch uh, and therefore uh, a big lift uh, is, makes the back uncomfortable. So you might have a lower lift if you feel uncomfortable. Conversely, some people have got a big lumbar arch and they have too low a lift and then they're uncomfortable, right? So if you've got no back arch or very little lumbar or lordosis, then you might actually want to lower your lift if your back's uncomfortable. The arms can be, the supports under the legs, as I say, especially if there's any sacroiliac discomfort. And then the arms can be wherever. I like to stretch my arms over my head, but then if I do that, I want to turn the block around so it doesn't get in the way of the elbows. You don't have to have a block for the head, you can do it without, but the chin and chest should be close to each other. Okay. Supta, supine, bada, bound, kona, like corner, like the English word corner means an angle. And asana in this context means posture. Expressive, natural, honest breaths. With eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft. And we're just going to take, let's say, ten, fifteen breaths long enough to investigate where we can give.
Okay. It's nice, isn't it? It's a good time of day. Yeah. Time of day here that we're filming and uh, is uh, twilight. It's one of the liminal spaces, the in-between spaces. And these are the most important spaces to a yogi. In between thoughts, in between breaths, in between day and night, in between sleeping and waking. These liminal spaces are important because they're the moments when we're nowhere. And when the moment when we're nowhere is the moment that we're everywhere. And the moment that we're everywhere, we're open to the goddess. And the moment we're open to the goddess, clinging just doesn't occur. And the moment clinging doesn't occur, you fall back into your true nature. Fall, you fall. You don't grasp for it, you don't strive for it, you fall into it. And your true nature is peace. It's peace. It's space. It's timeless. It's non-agitation. Hmm. We're going to press down into the ground to bring ourselves up from that pose, calm and resolute. Well done. Well done, don't rush. That's it. And then ovs. Undo yourself. <clears throat> and we're going to come to Shavasana. Anyone with uh, sacroiliac discomfort can do Shavasana with, with the support uh, under the pelvis and legs up on a chair. So I'll just sort of mime, I'll mime that <laughs> out. There's the block. Uh, this is just in case anyone's got that sort of problem. And then the legs will go up on a chair like that. If you can tilt the chair so your legs slope, slope down, that's really super duper. Uh, otherwise, you can be flat on the floor. Uh, the legs obviously extend. Head support, if the head tips back, is essential. Palms facing up, shoulder blades scooted under. It's the beautiful, 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 beautiful pose. Shavasana. <laughs> Make sure you're warm, make sure you're comfortable. Make sure there's sufficient space around you. And it's a beautiful pose because it really is just about giving. It's pretty much the whole thing is just giving. And if we want peace, which we all do, giving is how you find it. Because the moment, the mother, which is this moment at all moments, she is the ultimate freer. She frees you of all your suffering. By taking it from you. Because suffering is only suffering when it has someone to attach to. She frees us like that. Eyes relaxed, jaw relaxed. Beautiful correlation between giving and freedom. Freedom that is from suffering, suffering that is created through this sense of grasping particular things as mine whilst rejecting others as not mine. What the goddess shows us is that they, we can't isolate anything from everything to be able to say it 
belongs to me or doesn't belong to me. There's nothing that exists that discreetly, that autonomously. Everything is everything. Take three extra deep breaths with extra long exhales like sighs, giving totally with those exhales. And stay with the breath after that, the natural selfless breath. Give your body as a gift to the breath, here, breath, you could say, in your mind, here's the body, it's yours, roam completely freely around. It's called yajna. Sacrifice that brings freedom. Now it's really lovely to lay as long as you've got, so feel free to lay on longer, but if you're, if you're ready to come out of the pose, then wiggle the toes and the fingers, or you can do that when you're ready to come out of the pose. It could be now, it could be in a few minutes. And then stretches, organic stretches. And then the legs will bend. The feet will come onto the floor. The buttocks will scoot under. And the breath will be deep and releasing. We'll then roll onto our left side. With knees drawn up, tummy soft. Before rolling on to our other side, similarly, knees drawn up, tummy soft. And bringing yourself round with light and color, perhaps rubbing the eyes, perhaps stretching out. And finally, when you feel ready to come up, bringing yourself up nice and easy. Transference of merit. <laughs> May any merit gained in our acting in this way go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. Om. Oh.